By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a special match for you because there are two combo decks comboing off against each other. And that is the Tex Edge deck versus the Field of Dreams Millstone deck. And before we start, I would just brief, briefly like to explain to you how these decks work. So the Tex Edge deck works on two enchantments, Land Tex, which is White Legends card for one white mana. And the card basically allows you to collect land out of your library. And it works together very well with Lance Edge, because Lance Edge is a red enchantment from Legends, which says when you discard a land card, you can deal two damage to any target. So in other words, if you have 10 lands in total, you can discard them and deal 20 damage to your opponent. And that's basically the, the win condition of this deck. And it's playing against the Field of Dreams Millstone deck. Now this deck works on Field of Dreams, which is a blue enchantment. And it reads, players must play with the top card of the library revealed. So this means that you can see each other's draws. And when you're playing with Millstone, uh, you can decide if you want to leave the card of your opponent on top, or your own card for that matter, or not. So by Millstone, Millstoning away, milling away the key cards of your opponent, you can control the match and win uh, because of your ultimate control. So you can win on the opponent being deck dead, or you can win on uh, simply your opponent conceding because you know he or she is not drawing uh, what you need. So that is basically how these two uh, decks work and I'm really curious to have a look at this match and uh, see what's going to happen. So let's go continue to game number one. Game number one and it looks like both players are scrying here so they must have taken a mulligan down to six cards and I believe it's the player on the right playing with the uh, Field of Dreams deck who is on the play. And he starts with the Library of Alexandria. That's kind of your dream start. But he has taken a mulligan, so that means he cannot activate it yet. Drawing card number six. Player on the left playing with the Lantex Lance Edge combo deck uh, has started out with an Ivory Tower. And it's interesting to see that he doesn't play his second land drop. That's probably because of the Lantex. He wants to be able to activate the Lantex when he draws it. And he's gaining life from the Ivory Tower as well. So that's quite interesting that you're in a matchup where you can say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to skip this turn and do absolutely nothing. And you don't even have to pay for that. So you're basically giving your opponent a time walk and it has no consequence. Quite interesting. But the library is active now. And when you're having the land tax deck, you're, you're pretty happy that you're behind on land right now. Because that means that as soon as you draw a land tax, it gets activated. One of the things I do wonder about with these combo decks is that they're both very slow decks. And of course you're playing at a tournament, so that means you have limited time. And I believe the, the rounds at the Hill Giant Cup uh, are 50 minutes, and it's the best of three games. So that could be something that you need to keep in the, in the back of your head as well when you're a player. And this is interesting, there's a Simbat hitting the battlefield, it's a 1-1 one -one creature, there's a second one from the Arabian Nights. And there's a Disenchant, and there's an Ancestral Recall. And look at that life total go. It's already on 27. Curious to see, and there's a second Ivory Tower. I'm sure there's a Library of Lang in there somewhere to gain even more advantage from those uh, Ivory Towers. But what I wanted to say is Simbat is a creature. 1-1 one, one creature you can tap to draw a card. If it's a land card you can keep the card and if not you discard the card. Personally I think this card is very much underplayed because in this format you can play with four mazes, you can play with four factories, you can play with Library of Alexandria as you can see it's on the table. You need uh, duels of the right color. So in other words there are a lot of moments where you just need a specific land card. To continue and Simba can be uh, very useful. And there's the live game again 33 live for the Lantex Lance Edge player. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And there's a Winds of Change. And what's going to happen? There's going to be an extra draw. Will it, re will it resolve? Obviously, the. Um, nope, there's a counter spell. Obviously, he's looking for his combo pieces here, the Lantex player. And he's playing a Demonic Tutor. That's nice. Interesting choice to first play the wind, Winds of Change 
and not playing the demonic tutor interesting, kind of expecting it to be countered. So that's a nice play, actually, and the land tax is in the game. And then when you're the opponent, you know, uh-oh, the first piece of the puzzle is there. And the Field of Dreams deck obviously is having a lot of card advantage with the Library of Alexandria, even after that Ancestral Recall. There's a nice swing by some uh, right, army of Simbats swinging in for two whole damage. Um, but this is just going to be insane because the Ivory Towers, um, they get to stack after the land text is resolved because he can decide the order of the stack. So he puts the Ivory Towers first and then as a response to the trigger, he uh, uses the ability of land tax in the upkeep to search for more land, so he gains even more life, and he's already, I think, a 36 or something, or 38. Uh, and there's a moat, the white enchantment, obviously handy in this kind of type of deck. Uh, he's playing creatureless, I assume, so that means that a moat is just a great tool to keep the at least the creatures on the ground uh, away from your life total. And there's the Field of Dreams, very nice. Unfortunately, we cannot really see the top of the decks from here. I believe that's a mind twist on the top of the Field of Dreams player, but I can't really see it. So that's a bit sad for this particular matchup that we cannot see the top cards because it has a big influence on the game. And as you can see, the player on the right is actually going to write down the names of the cards. Wow, and that's some dedication there. I could never do that on a Sunday, so my respect for you, sir, for doing that. Is he going to keep this up the whole game? That's going to be interesting, and I believe... The uh, Tex Edge player is now in 44 life. That's crazy. And this is interesting as well. You see him activating... Um, <laughs> it's funny, he wanted to play... Uh, sorry, City of Brass on the Simbat. Uh, and this was interesting because he's actually using the Simbat also to go through his deck. So when he sees a card at the top, in this case, a Swords to Plowshares, which is useful, useless against this... Uh, land tax land edge deck he uses the Simba to get rid of the card and that's not a great way to use Simba if you're looking for a specific uh, card and you can see the top of your deck and you know it's not there you can simply mill yourself with the Simba so again I think the card is underplayed I um, I have two copies myself I'm, I'm thinking about maybe getting two more and uh, and doing something with that card and there's a mind twist we all saw him draw it and uh, this also deactivates the Ivory Towers, although I think that life total isn't really um, of any importance for the uh, uh, for the Land Tax Land's Edge player, at least, because when you're playing with Field of Dreams, you don't want to kill your opponent with life totals. And look at him go there. He's writing down the other names of the cards, and that's some dedication. That's nice. And there he goes again. Interesting. And there's a disenchant on the land tax. That's always the thing with these combo decks, especially when they get a little bit more known. Of course, Sir Randy Bueller was the one that built the land tax lands edge uh, combo deck that did very well in the uh, uh, with the EC ru ruling. Um, and people know about this deck, so they kind of know okay that land tax and lands edge. Those are the two cards that I want to disenchant. And there's a millstone, and now he kind of has his combo going, because with Field of Dreams he can see what the opponent is going to draw, and he can get rid of those key cards. And there is a scoop. Wow, that went fairly quickly. And I actually asked uh, the player on the left with the Lantex Lance Edge deck, uh, why did you scoop? And he told me, well, it's a matter of time. We have a limited amount of time, and with his combination on the board and the disenchant over my land tax and the cards I still had left in my hand. Remember, there was just a mind twist. So it would, took him, it would take him a while to get back. And he, he already played his Ancestral Recall and he told me, you know, there was a very small chance of me actually winning that first game. So I'd rather concede, give it to him and have more time to win game number two and game number three. Uh, for now, it's a victory for the Field of Dreams Millstone deck. And let's continue to game number two. Game number two, and it's already an interesting start here because the uh, Lance Tex, Lance Edge opponent has uh, chosen to be on the draw and not on the play, which makes sense when you're playing uh, with that deck, but it's interesting. It's all about 
uh, staying behind on that land count. And look at that explosive turn there of the Lantex deck. I see two Moxen, I see a Fowler Stone, a uh, Sol Ring, and a Plains on the battlefield. Very explosive, but is it really going to help him? I mean, these are not the pieces that you want to see, and his hand is, is almost empty now. So despite the fact that he's on the draw and not on the play, his hand is almost empty. And that Field of Dreams is a great start because it's an important piece of your combo. And there's the Millstone. Ooh, and this is not looking good when you are the, um, the Lantax Lance Edge player. Oh, and this makes sense. He had a Time Twister in his hand. Now I understand why he kept that hand. Because I wanted to say, why would you keep a hand with all those um, mana rocks when you're playing a, a deck like Lantax Lance Edge? You know, it's not going to be useful, but he had a time twister all that time. So that really helps, and it gives him a fresh hand. And that's, of course, also a great tool against the uh, Millstone. And now because of the Field of Dreams, they have to show all the cards that they've drawn. So this is quite interesting. And this is a very interesting start, and uh, also a great start, because there's a Blood Moon, and that's completely canceling the plans, I believe, of the uh, Field of Dreams player, at least to cast anything for himself. He can still mill, though, with the two red mana. And he'll probably need a, um, a Mox here, a Mox, uh, Mox Ruby. Uh, no, sorry, a Mox Pearl, of course, to get white mana to disenchant that Blood Moon. And I can see that there's already a Lance Edge uh, card in his hand. I mean, these are such weird games. I mean, we see, we see open hands, we, there's so much happening. And again, the player with the Lantex Lance Edge deck doesn't want to play out any cards because he wants to use the Lance to hurt his opponent. And as you can see, his opponent is still on 20, but that's going to change very quickly. And there's a second Lantex. And of course, when you're an opponent, um, you know, there's not much that he can do right now. And he's completely locked. Completely locked. What can he do? And he just has to watch and stand idly by while his opponent is just drawing all the cards, all the basic lands out of his library. And I think I saw a library of Lang there. So that means that he can keep it, make his hand as big as he wants to. And that's it, yeah, that's the game. Makes sense. Uh, there's, there's nothing you can do when you're the Field of Dreams player. That means it's 1-1 and this was a very quick game. Wow, and, and you can see when the Lantex Lance Edge deck starts to work, Oh my God, you, you, have, you have problems when you're the opponent. Uh, very curious to see what's going to happen in that decisive third game, game number three. Game number three, and let's see who's going to take the victory here. It's 1-1, it's the Field of Dreams player on the play, starting here with a Black Lotus and a Tundra. Pretty, pretty good start here. And oh, look at this, there is a Demonic Tutor, turn one. And this is just crazy about old school, look at these openings. And what card is he going to look for? And let's see what's going to happen. And <laughs> there's another Black Lotus. I mean, look at this board state. And the Black Lotus goes, sacks it for three white. Apparently, there are two land taxes on the field and an ivory tower. Okay, this is great. Only two cards in hand. But Lantex cannot be activated yet because the opponent doesn't control more land. And it's interesting to see here, and I think it's a good decision by the Field of Dreams player, not to play out a second land and simply to wait. I mean, playing out a second land would just help your opponent. And he has a Sinbad in play. We saw that one earlier. Dealing a damage, playing a second one. Why not? Maybe that's the way to go. Just deal damage. Why not? He has no removal. He only has one moat, so... Let's go for it. And there's a flip. Oh, he's gonna flip on his own basic land, of course. <laughs> That's great. By flipping on his own basic land, uh, he has less land than his opponent, hence he can activate the land tax. And look at him go, he's got six lands. And that means his ivory tower will get an activation as well. And there's a little that the opponent can do against his brilliant move. Very nice. You don't see that often somebody flipping on their own land, playing a Chaos Orb, and choosing their own land to destroy. Uh, there's an island, there's a Library of Lang, and that's great. That's all you want, really. Library of Lang, Ivory Tower, sitting in your tower, waiting until you get a Lance Edge, 
and then finish the game. There's a double attack by the Simbats. Obviously the opponent is not playing out any more basics, or I mean any more land in general. There's a disenchant on the ivory tower, well played, and there's a disenchant on the lotus. Will there be a counter spell? That's the question. No, he's just gonna let it go. Accepting the loss here. And this is interesting. The uh, land text player has decided to just go on and play out basic lands and kind of not trying to get uh, behind with the land count. You would almost kind of play with stone rains then maybe in your in your land text deck just to activate your land text. I mean, think about it. I wonder if he plays with Armageddon's in this build. There are different builds and you make different choices. And there's an ivory tower again. And that is what I like about combo decks. You think, okay, a combo deck is boring because you just have a few pieces that you want to assemble. But what's interesting are the pieces surrounding your combo pieces. How are you going to make your deck as efficient as possible? And how are you going to make your deck um, withstand all the different type of decks that you have to play against? And um, th that's what's interesting by looking at the little differences. And there's a demonic tutor from the Field of Dreams Millstone player here. I wonder what he's looking for. I mean, a Field of Dreams would be obvious because then you can and use your um, your Simbats more accurately for your own draw. Um, and you already have a Millstone, so you can try to make sure that your opponent isn't going to draw into a Lance Edge. But it's probably not a Field of Dreams or else he would have played it. So let's see. What's going to happen? It's quite exciting, actually. This is, I mean, it's 1-1, one, one, and both players are just doing weird stuff. It's cool to look at, and I, I don't see these games often with these decks. And there's a, there's a little mill there. Why not, when you have the mana? And that's, of course, one of the things with the Atlantic Lance Edge deck. There is no pressure, so you're kind of sitting there thinking, okay, it's going, okay, I'm milling him. I have my Moxin for my colored mana. I'm actually, I'm doing fine. Uh, but... You know, and you've seen that in game number two, it can go really, really quickly when he has a Lance Edge on there and he has an active land tax. I mean, you're gone. You're just a goner. Tap for four, uh, and there's a mind twist. So did he look up a mind twist? Knowing that, that that will also deactivate the ivory tower. Oh, but of course, there's a library of Lang. So he can now, I think with the library of Lang, he can now choose what cards he wants to discard and what cards he wants to put back on his library. And unfortunately, we cannot see his library, so we don't know what he's putting back. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So again, it's something to work on, work on at the next tournament to get an even better camera angle. And oh, there it is. There is the Armageddon. I asked the question, is he going to play with the Armageddon? And yes, he plays with the Armageddon. Maybe a very stupid question, because maybe when you are a Lantex Lance Edge player, you're like, yeah, of course I'm playing Armageddon. Uh, maybe, but again, I've never played this deck, so I'm hardly an expert. And let's see what's going to happen next, because when you're the Field of Dreams player, um, you don't really want to play out of land, because then the Lantex gets activated. <laughs> That's funny, he's throwing away a brain geyser. Yeah, I don't really think you'll need it for this matchup. And there's a Field of Dreams, only one blue. And with the two mocks, you can actually activate the Millstones, so why not? It's a very interesting game, and I do see a Mishra's Factory there, which is tempting to play, because you can do some more damage. Oh no, it's not, because he has that Blood Moon on the field. So it's just going to be a basic mountain. And probably, like I said before, you don't want to play out on land, because then the land taxes will go off. And he has a double Ivory Tower. So he's just going to keep attacking. It's a little bit hard to see what his life count is. I believe it's it's now it's 12 or 13, one of the two. I believe it's 13 actually, because it's a five on the side. So he's on 13, and the Field of Dreams player is still on 20. And yeah, he played a land, of course. Okay, oh, look at him go, look at him riding down there. Great, I, I like that, very professional. And there are the lives again. Oh, and that kind of sucks when you're, you know, trying to just do your, do your damage with the uh, Simbats there. 
And there's a Winds of Change again. And Winds of Change is a legend card that lets you like put back all the cards in your hand, you have to reshuffle them in the library and then draw the same amount of cards. So if you have a hand of four, you put it back in your library and you draw four again. Or in this case, I believe you had like, I don't know, eight cards. And now we have this silly thing going on that because of the Field of Dreams, you have to show all the cards that you've just drawn. And it's just crazy. I mean, I love these games. Crazy to look at. Very hard to commentate because I cannot always follow what's going to happen. I do see a Lance Edge there in his hand. And a Lance Edge and a Blood Moon, they work so great together. Fantastic. There's another draw. There's a Scepter. And you don't want to play out another land. Or are you going to do that? I think that's what they're discussing. Because if you play it out, you activate the two land taxes. But if you don't do anything, you're going to die regardless. So what can you do? I see a time twister there. That might be a solution. Because he's having the combo pieces now. So maybe with the land time twister, you can, you know, force something. Playing a second millstone. It's so difficult here to make the right decision. Drawing land after land. In any other game, this would be great, you know, but against this deck, I mean, it's just crazy you're playing against a deck where you don't want to play out lands. I mean, that's the essence of magic, playing out lands and ca casting spells. Sylvan Library, of course, a beautiful addition. And this is really an enchantment-heavy deck, so um, I would consider, you know, sideboarding in a card like Presence of the Master against these enchantment-heavy decks because that would be a serious problem for the Lantex Lance Edge player. Of course he has disenchants, but still. And Tranquility, yes, Tranquility would really, really help. But then you have to play green. So looking at three cards here. Oh, of course, because of the Sylvan Library. I want to say not sure why, but it's because of the Sylvan Library. And these are just crazy board states. And, oh, of course, there's the Enchant World rule. So this is interesting as well. Um, Field of Dreams is a or Enchant World or World Enchantment. Please help me out here. Just leave a comment if I'm making mistakes. And when another World Enchantment is being played, it means the other one is removed. And this works actually great against the Abyss as well. And he's playing a Time Twister. Smart move because he has all the cards in hand that he needs. And now he's just going to draw seven new cards. Why not? And he doesn't have to show them because the Field of Dreams is no longer on the battlefield. Interesting. Looking at the life totals, it's very hard to see what the life total of the Tax Edge player is. We can see that the Field of Dreams player is only on 12. But the thing is that there's a dice behind the dice that we can see so it's three life plus that many tens so it could be and again you see him changing the dice I, I believe he's in his 30 plus lives in total he has a lot of life you have to imagine he's been having that uh, double ivory tower on the field for a while now and his hand is always full so and there's even a third dice behind there so he's on eight something so 38 or 28 but it's it's very hard to see there's a very nice move here by the um by the field of dreams player actually i'm we're kind of missing it but um he's playing a blue elemental blast over that lantex but not before discarding all the lands in his hand he doesn't want to play out an extra land because then the lantex gets activated so he does not want to do that And there is a Chaos Orb. So is he going to flip on his own land again? We've seen him doing that earlier to activate those taxes. Doesn't have to do it now, of course. And let's see. What will he do next? And he is actually going to flip on his mountain. And that means that the land taxes will be activated next upkeep. And so he really needs 
uh, a lance edge now. And this works double for him because he's going to take out a lot of basic lands, so the chances of finding something useful are increasing then as well. Let's see what a Field of Dreams player can do. Play on an Ancestral Recall. Okay. Playing on a Strip Mine. No, he's not. And he kind of knows now next turn you're going to um, you're going to activate your land taxes. And I do see a strip mine there, so maybe he can strip his own land. Would he do that? He's playing a disenchant on what is he? on one of the blood moons. How crazy is it you're playing against an opponent that has two blood moons in play? I mean, <laughs> it's just crazy. Oh, look at him picking up all those lands. And I, oh no, he needs a Lance Edge, of course. I want to say that's game, but he needs a Lance Edge. He's gaining a lot of life there, and he's going going to 30 or something. And look at those board states, just crazy. He needs a Mox Ruby, and he has all of them. And there's a Lance Edge, and that's the game. Yeah, I think, <laughs> oh, oh. Oh man, this is so hard to follow, but that was the game. Uh, well done, well played. It was a pleasure to look at both of these decks, so the Lantex Lance Edge combo deck and the Field of Dreams Millstone deck. Thank you for this game, and the winner is the Lantex Lance Edge uh, deck. Congratulations. Maybe we'll see you again in the top eight, uh, in, in the semifinals, in the finals, who knows. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of, the, of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. If you'd like to see more, check out the playlist that's appearing right now. And see you next time.